Hi guys, good day, it's me, Teacher MJ. Our topic for today is all about the side-side-side or SSS congruence postulate. So without further ado, let's do this topic. So the definition of the SSS postulate, all three sides in one triangle are congruent to all three sides in the other triangle. So once we've proved that all three sides of this first triangle is the same with the other three sides of this other triangle therefore the two triangles are congruent any part of these two triangles are congruent even the angles once we prove that all three sides are congruent that is the SSS postulate all right so without further ado let's do it let's let's give an example so what if we have a triangle we label this one okay later on class we will be answering some examples like you tell whether this is congruent or not so let let us tell if this triangle is congruent or not but before that let's explain this SSS, SSS postulate so if we have a triangle given two triangles if we label this one as triangle ABC and this one is our triangle DEF All right so this is ABC first triangle and second triangle is DEF and we mark this one that our AB okay that AB is congruent to DE so we will mark this one that this side is congruent to this side and if BC is congruent to EF so BC is congruent to EF and AC the segment AC is congruent to this segment DF now once we prove that the that the sides of this first triangle is equal is congruent to the other three sides Therefore, these two triangles are congruent. Any part of these triangles are congruent. Because we can say that this AB, okay, AB, alright, so AB, we can say that AB is congruent to DE, segment DE, AB is congruent to DE, and BC, segment BC, is congruent to EF, segment EF, and segment AC is congruent to segment DF. Alright, now once we prove that all three sides of this given triangles are congruent, so this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side. Therefore, we can say that these two triangles are congruent. So we can say, we can write this as triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Okay, you start at A. So ABC, it should be DEF. Okay, DEF. So that's it. That's how you deal with the SSS postulate. You prove that if the three sides are given, if they have markings, so if they have markings, therefore, this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side, therefore, these two triangles are congruent. So that's it. That's how you deal with the postulate. So let's try an example for us to understand this one. You tell whether if it's congruent or not. Okay? Let's give an example. Let's try number one. So what if we have this example? You tell, you pause the video. All right. Class, go ahead. You tell if it's congruent or not. Okay, you're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's check. So, given, we have given triangles here. So, therefore, this side, so we have markings. Okay, so this side is congruent to this side. So, we can say that, okay, we can say that AC is congruent to PR. Okay, or CA is congruent to RP. That's actually the same with this segment. Okay, so we can say that AC is, segment AC is congruent to segment PR. What else class? We can also say that CB, is CB congruent to PQ or CB congruent to RQ? Okay, so CB is congruent to RQ. So CB Segment CB is congruent to, CB is congruent to RQ. Segment RQ. So what else? What else can you see? That's correct. We can say that AB, segment AB, 
is congruent to segment PQ. Alright, so once we prove that these three sides are congruent to these three sides, therefore, we can say that triangle A, okay, A, B, C, A, B, C, is congruent to triangle, give it a bit of space, let me write it back, triangle A, B, C, is congruent to triangle, so let's start with A, B, C, so once again, three markings, do not forget, you start with A, B, C, you start with three markings, so you will read this one as P, Q, R, okay, do not read this one as P, R, Q, because the you start with the three markings, A, P, A, B, with three markings here, so A, B, C, it should be P, Q, R, okay, do not forget about it, because if you will write it P, R, Q, that is not symmetrical to the other triangle, okay, it should be symmetrical, you start with P, okay, start with A, start with P, P, then three markings, so P, Q, R, it's not P, R, Q, because the first a, B, C, you start with the three markings, A, B, C, it should be symmetrical with P, Q, R. So, triangle P, Q, R. Alright, so, that's it. So, therefore, this triangle right here, is it congruent or not? So, it is congruent. So, our answer is congruent. Alright, so, our answer is congruent. Let's try another example class. Okay, what if we have... Okay, what if this one? You tell whether it's, if it's congruent or not. So let's label this one. What if we say this is ABC, triangle ABC, or let's make it here, ABC. Alright, and this is D, E, F. So ABC and D, E, F. So therefore, we can say that so, these two sides are congruent, and these two sides are congruent. Therefore, if we, if we try to know the kinds of triangle, we can, leave, we can name this one as an isosceles triangle. Do not forget, class. Isosceles triangle, there are two sides. Two sides are congruent. This side and this side are congruent. So, this, in, this is an isosceles triangle. Two sides are congruent. So, we can label this one as this one, this side, A, B. Segment AB is congruent to DE, congruent to DE, and segment BC, okay, BC is congruent to EF, so AB is congruent to DE, and BC is congruent to EF, and AC, segment AC is congruent to Segment DF. Alright, now once we prove that all three sides are congruent because this side is congruent, this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, therefore we can say that triangle ABC okay, is congruent to triangle DEF. DEF. So our answer is congruent. All right, let's try another example. Okay, let's try another example. What if we have this one? Okay, so so we have markings here. So we can say that PS is congruent to. So, PS is congruent to LG, and ST, ST is congruent to GM. What else? Do you have any other markings? No other markings, right? We cannot say, okay, we cannot say, we, we cannot say that this line PT is congruent to line LM. Why is that, sir? Because we don't have markings. Since we don't have markings and we only prove that these two sides, we only prove two sides. So once again, in this SSS postulate, we need to prove three sides. Three sides. But since we only prove two sides which are congruent, so therefore, which are congruent, so therefore, these two triangles 
are not congruent because we don't have markings in this last side, this one, PT and LM. So our answer is not congruent. So we can say that triangle PST is not congruent, not congruent to triangle LGM. Okay? And you will be asking, sir, why is it not congruent? Because we don't have the marking in the last sides. We are not sure that if these two triangles are congruent. So therefore, it is not congruent. Alright, let's try another example. What if we have like this? Okay? What if we have like this? A, a triangle like this. Okay, you check first. Once again, we check first if it's, if it's congruent or not. So, we have a triangle DGT and ET is uh, bisect this line DG. Okay, the word bisect their class. This ET cut this DG into half. Okay, cut this DG into half. Therefore, this side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side. Alright, so we proved this one. So, we can say that DT this segment DT is congruent to segment GT. DT is congruent to GT. What else class? Yes, this one, since it divides into half, we bisect this this line ET bisect this G, D, DG. Okay? Segment ET bisect this DG, it means that they cut this line DG into half, two equal parts. So, therefore, this DE, the segment DE, is congruent to the segment GE. Okay, do not forget DE, you read it DE. Therefore, in the, in the other side, you read it symmetrical, it should be GE. Okay, but it's actually the same, EG and GE. But you just need to read it symmetrical. Same with this first thing that you read. So, GE. What else, class? Now, could you say that these two triangles are not congruent because you prove you only prove two tri two sides which are congruent? So do not stop right there because as you can see, okay, as you can see, if you break down this triangle, so we can write we can draw this triangle as triangle this one. Okay, if you draw this triangle, if you cut this triangle into half, we can write this as E D T. And this other triangle, okay, if we break down this other triangle, we can also uh, draw this triangle as E, T, G, right? Have you noticed the two triangles, class? So, you, 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 we proved a while ago that this side is congruent to this side and this side is congruent to this side. But what else can you see, class? What else can you see with this with this given triangle? As you can see, they share they share a common side which is ET. Okay, you, we they share a common side which is ET. So therefore, if they share a common side, of course that would, the sides would be equal, right? Do not forget, class, if they share a common side. Okay, if 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 the two triangles share a common side. Okay, let me just write it. If two triangles share a common side, share a common side, do not forget this one class, always remember this one, common side, we called it reflexive property. Okay? We called it reflexive property. Alright, do not forget class. If you break down this triangle, we do have two triangles here. We have triangle DET and triangle GET, right? We break down this two triangles. As you can see, they share both sides, which is ET. So therefore, we can say, even without markings, class, even without markings, so always remember this one, okay? Always remember this one, even without markings, we can also say, we can always say that this side, okay? This side ET is congruent to this side because they both share same side. And that's what we call reflexive property. Always remember this one. 
If you have some questions with this reflexive property, I do have a link in the description below with regards to answering SSS2 column proof. Okay, SSS2 column proof. You, you can share, you can see that video class for you to really understand this one and for you to have more knowledge about the SSS postulate. Alright, so as you can see, they share both sides. So therefore, we can see, we can say, sorry, we can say that ET, okay, this line ET is congruent to line ET. Okay, so ET, this, this side ET is congruent to this side ET. And our reason for that, once again, it is reflexive property, reflexive property. Okay, sir, what is reflex, reflexive property? Reflexive property is when the two triangles share common both sides. Okay, same sides. So, let me just erase this one for us to write our final postulate. So, we can say that triangle D, E, T is congruent. So, once again, even without markings, we already know that this is congruent. It's because of the reflexive property. It's congruent to triangle G, G, E, T. And our answer is congruent. Alright, so that's it class. That's how you deal with the SSS congruence postulate. So if you have some questions, go ahead. You leave a comment. Do not forget to share our video and do not forget to subscribe also. You share it to your friends class and to your classmates so that we can help them. Okay, so that we can help them. Once again, if two triangles share common sides, we call that reflexive property. Okay, you have a great day class. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.